The name of the game is uh, playing really, really good baseball in late May. You know, we have a motto here that, you know, little things become big things. Um, and if we can if we can take care of those little things, um, I think we're going you know, to be all right. We got to bring your expectations are high. And this is kind of what we're used to. This is this is how I was in the middle township basketball. I miss being on the sidelines. I miss everything what high school football is all about. I think it's the greatest sport. It's not a... I'll walk in the park going through our way. And the message is, the message is simple. We want to win a state championship. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into Cal 101 right here on Cape Atlantic Live. I'm your host, Nick Costco. Another edition of our summer football preview series for the 2024 campaign. With me now is new Absagami football coach, Lamont Robinson. Coach, thank you for joining me, my man. Good to talk to you for the first time. And I get just uh, take me through the whirlwind of being named the new head coach just a few months ago, getting ready for your first season at the helm and now over in Galloway. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate um, getting a chance to speak about Apps Again Me Football and represent our school. Um, got the job in February um, of this year. Kind of started off as, you know, me just wanting to get my name back in the, you know, ring of things of the high school level. I've been with the youth and my children for the last few years. Um, Seen the Apps Academy opening probably in like December of last year, put my name in, uh, got called down for an interview. And, you know, it was it was it was almost like instant, you know, falling in love in the sense of a place that I wasn't overly familiar with. Came down, got a chance to meet the administration, you know, see a little bit of the building, learn a little bit about the school. And it was just like, man, this is a pretty awesome place. The interest was mutual. And, you know, a month or so later in January, End of January, um, beginning of February, got the call that I would uh, be offered the job and, you know, just hit the ground, you know, running from there, trying to get to learn, to learn the kids, learn the school, learn, to, um, learn the area um, and, and just start to put everything together. So as far as the listening and viewing audience is concerned, for those who don't know you, you know, you, you're a former coach over at Washington Township High School. You've been very involved with USA football and also, as you just mentioned, uh, with the youth football culture as well. What, what is some of your background that people should know about that uh, since you are new to the Cape Atlantic area? I know it's the Western, Western State Football League. It's, you know, it's, yes. it's a mega league, but for those who don't know you from the Cape Atlantic area, what should they know about you and uh, your previous experience as head coach? Absolutely. I'll try to give a quick rundown. Um, Salem uh, native, um, home of Jonathan Taylor now, had, a, had a, uh, the fortune of coaching him his sophomore year, uh, being back home. Uh, but born and raised there, went to University of Oklahoma, played underneath the legendary Hall of Fame coach Bob Stoops. Um, our current head coach, uh, Brent Venables, was actually my linebackers coach and defensive coordinator. So from a football pedigree standpoint, um, I've gotten a chance to learn from some of the best um, in the business. Um, have had stints as a linebackers coach, defensive coordinator, high school wise at Clayton, Salem. Uh, went to Millville with Coach Thomas, who's now at Syracuse, but uh, was you know responsible for you know building that Millville football that we know of today. Uh, won a Group Five championship uh, over there with them um, as a defensive coordinator. Then served at Washington Township for a year as the head coach. Um, last five years, I've been with Woodstown Youth uh, Football where the last um, three years we've went to three championships in a row, won the last two on a 22-game winning streak with, with, with the youngins, which is pretty fun. Um, even though our JV um, got into action, they won them a championship last year. So um, I've had a really great time coaching my sons, um, you know, at, with the Wistown Youth uh, Program. Um, and along the way, I was very fortunate to be involved with USA football. I served in mm. – um, an international bowl and in, uh, two international bowls in Dallas served at an international bowl down at the pro bowl one year and had two tours um, in world championship games. We went over to um, Harbin, China uh, one year. Um, and then two years later, we went down to Mexico city uh, with USA football. So uh, been, been, been an awesome time. Uh, the, the game has really blessed me, been super fortunate. Um, I grew up a kid without a lot, you know, my vacations growing up was reading books um, and the game of football, you know, has allowed me to turn, you know, some of those, you know, some of those books into real life in terms of getting to see our country and getting to see the world. So it's been awesome, you know. And I've also coached um, high school girls basketball for six years. I uh, was at Kingsway as the varsity girls basketball coach and have done middle school in Woodstown and, um, you know, uh, uh, basketball with Salem. Uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm a coach's coach. I love to coach. That's my, my life's passion. And I've been fortunate enough to, you know, be able to do that, you know, um, with, with, with a priority. 
Well, so with all this experience and you just mentioned, you know, over the last five years, coaching the Woodstown youth, coaching your sons and what, what exactly was your calling to come back to the high school level, knowing that you've had previous, previous experience at a big school like Washington Township, you know, you're on the Millville staff, which obviously the locals know around here as well. Yes. What, what, what brought you back to saying, you know what, I have that itch again. I want to be a head coach again. What, 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 what was, what, what exactly clicked in your head saying, you know, what, Apps Game is, o- is open. Let me go apply for that job. I'll be honest. There were two things kind of, you know, um, put with that push. Uh, on our, this last championship run we had, um, you know, as, as much fun as it, I was, I, I, I've had with the youth, I kind of felt like, you know, from going from high school and having some college experience coaching the youth, um, I, I kind of felt like I was, I don't want to say cheating a little bit, but, you know, just what I was bringing kind of, you know, the challenge, I guess, the challenge. I felt like I was, you know, kind of, you know, needing a bigger challenge is the best way to put it um, from from what I was getting there. And then my oldest son, um, he's in eighth grade uh, now. So he has another year before he's in high school. Um, and, and, and and my big a big thing that I, I was looking at in terms of, you know, getting back into high school uh, was looking at a place where, you know, I would send my, my own children and I would feel good about my own children going to uh, have an opportunity to coach them at the high school level. Um, so when I looked at a school, I was looking at somewhere with an eight to 10, you know, year plan because I have my oldest boy. Then I have my, my, my nephew, who's my godson, who's a year under him. Mm-hmm. And then I have my second boy, who's a year under that. And then I have a third boy as well. <laughs> so, you know, looking for a family plan, looking for a challenge and, 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 you know, being a coach, it takes so much time away from family, you know, so looking for an opportunity to do what I love with my family um, and, and putting those two things together and, and giving them, you know, uh, as much of me as, as possible um, is what led me to where we are today. So you preach family a lot. Of course, you it seems like your whole group is very tight knit and you wanted to keep that. I'll just call it a legacy going at Absagami. So, so it seems in uh, Daniel you know, down the line in a couple of years yes. from now. So when you, take that approach from your own family and you bring it to a big school like this, like apps game, which has a lot of history and across its, all of its athletic programs. Is that the type of message you want to preach to this team, especially coming as a new coach saying we want to be culture first, family first, and then we'll build from there. You are spot on, man. Um, I got some guys that have played some football in the program. Some of my older guys, I got some young guys who are just getting, you know, into the program um, but more than anything, you know, the last few months, my biggest message to those guys have been culture. I've got some guys who, you know, have college prospects, you know, in their future. Some guys want to get there. Um, with all of that being said, you know, starting ground zero, uh, fundamental, foundational level, you know, culture, 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 you know, we over me, uh, the team, you know, family, togetherness, unity. Those have been the cornerstones and the and 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 the you know the rallying cries of everything that we've done so far. Um, understanding that when you do that, if that is your foundation, um, it is what will allow your talent to be even better. Or even when you may not have the most talent, you still have a chance because you're together. You're you're a unit. You're cohesive. Um, there was a there's a saying um, on my uh, on on our wall back in college. Uh, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Um, and that's one of those mantras, you know, that if you could build your culture, if you could have family values, if you have high character um, young men in your program, the football piece is going to take care of itself more times than not. So that family culture piece is exactly what we're what we're building off of and what we're about at the moment. So when you look at some of the guys that are going to come back for you here in 2024, a lot of veterans, you got some seniors, got some juniors that had a lot of playing time last year. I wanted to start a quarterback, Kendall Armstrong. Yes. Uh, one of the more prototypical quarterbacks around in the Cape Atlantic area. He's got a big arm. I saw him uh, up close in person last year when we did a couple of our broadcasts uh, on this very channel. And he, you know, again, he, he can really sling it. So what were your first impressions of Kendall at quarterback? Oh my goodness! You 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 hit it! You hit it on the nose! You know, coming into and I, I'm a defensive guy by trade, um, but coming in and having a quarterback that can make every throw that you want a, a quarterback to make uh, makes you feel really excited. You know, on the offensive end, and not only you know to to know that he can make those throws, but to know that he's going to have some top notch guys to be able to throw the ball to. 
um, and, and, and Pedro Reyes and, and Don Johnson Jr. Um, uh, even, you know, a young guy that, you know, should be coming on this year, a uh, guy by the name of uh, Tanner. Um, like, um, it's, 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 it's really exciting because it opens up, you know, what you can do offensively. It opens up how you can stress the defense um, and, and, and to not be limited, you know, by, you know, arm strength or arm talent. It just is it, definitely a, a, a great advantage to have. And, and it's a great situation. He's the best quarterback that I've had, you know, and I look forward to, you know, utilizing that and, and, and show, showcasing him and allowing his last year to be his best year um, before he goes off and tears it up at the college level. So sticking with offense real, real quick before we go over to defense, your specialty, uh, Evan Russell at running back, and we, you just mentioned Don Johnson and Pedro Reyes at wide receiver. It seems like for an offense that had these guys last year, there's more potential for this trio, for this, you know, for this, uh, for the, the, these four guys to have one of the more dynamic approaches on offense in South Jersey. What do you make of the skill guys that are surrounding uh, Kendall? Yes, man. We got, you know, the guy you just mentioned, Pedro, Don, Ibn, are some guys, you know, we've had a chance to have a mini camp. Those were guys that were out at, you know, camp and they were showing up. Uh, you throw a guy like Jaden Holt, who was, you know, competing in the backfield as well. And even, you know, Logan, who's a defensive first guy, but, you know, has been getting some reps at running back and looking really good. Um, and, and and even, you know, uh, Sh Sh Shamir, um, we've, we've had a, a bunch of guys who've, showed up and have been coming out and putting, you know, some, some really solid work in the, the beautiful thing about coming in as a new coach is everything is kind of wiped, not kind of it, 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 your slates are wiped clean. Meaning, you know, I'm, I'm, you have film, you have, you know, some things that you've done in the past, but we're starting at February for our program in terms of under my leadership and everybody's, you know, got a clean slate. And, and, and the guys that we've just mentioned are guys that are taking advantage of that, guys that are showing up, guys that are competing, guys that are looking to, you know, lead us um, on the field. And, you know, it allows us the opportunity to be multiple as well as dynamic when you have multiple guys at multiple positions that can do multiple things. And then going back to the quarterback, a guy who can utilize each of those guys um in, in in a variety and various ways it, it makes really it makes it really exciting for what we should be able to be offensively this year um in, in terms of our attack and our approach so the two guys you actually just alluded to as well uh, logan simpson and shamir harper are linebacker and defensive back respectively you know now your side of the football yes. it seems like those are the two guys that are going to step up as the I, I guess the de facto leaders of the defense and they bring back a lot of experience uh what do you make of those two guys uh basically manning the defense and uh, bringing a new, ment uh, I guess, a new approach here in 2024. Absolutely, man. You, you hit it on the nose. New mentality, new approach. Um, uh, just, just a, um, a, a tenacity is, 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 is what I'm looking for from guys. And those are two guys who have been showing up. Two guys have been who have been learning, and uh, two guys who I, I, I hate to use the word expectation, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping you know continue along the, the the process and the progression that they've been on. Um, along with the name, and I, I, I couldn't talk defense without naming uh, a, a young man named by the name of Shiloh Presley. Mm -hmm. um, he's a guy who, you know, has a really great chance to be at, in the middle of our defense, our nose tackle, which for what we like to do defensively, sometimes that's a, a, a huge point of where we start because if we can win that battle, it allows us a lot more flexibility. Um, and, and, you know, it's, 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 an open, it's an open, you know, space of, competition and that's another thing that we've been promoting competition competing and you know the guys you mentioned and some other guys you know you have a guy you know a Brandon Miller who should be on our who should be a terror along our defensive line this year um a young guy by the name of Elias Blocker who's you know been work he's one of our best workers you know in the program you know and he'll be a sophomore this year uh guys just coming in and showing up and working and and, and getting after it um and that's you get 11 guys with their hair on fire who know their, you know, alignment, assignment, and then they're executing and they're looking to ride to the ball with, 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 with violent intentions. Um, that's how you become really good. And that's what we're that's what we're teaching. That's what guys are learning. And the guys have been receptive, you know, so we're just going to continue to build, build that up. I wanted to circle back a little bit, as you mentioned, your playing days at Oklahoma as part of your football background, you know, basically a long resume of football experience playing at the highest level and, of course, uh, coaching as well. When you look at 
your college experience at Oklahoma and playing under big, you know, big names, especially, you know, current head coach Brent Venables was your position coach yes. uh, back in the day. So when you look at your college experience, especially with the influx now of Division One talent in this area, we've seen it a lot more. You know, I, I you can name three Division One wide receivers now that are playing in this area over at Millville, AC, and Pleasantville. When you see that talent now, now more on a national level on display in this area. Now, again, you you know, you know coach Jonathan Taylor. We know what he's doing in the NFL. Yes. Do you feel like you can use your college experience to help these guys navigate those tricky waters of Division One recruiting, knowing that there's more of a spotlight now, it seems like, on Cape and Atlanta, in Atlantic County and basically South Jersey as a whole, more, uh, more so than, than it was 10 years ago? Absolutely, man. And and, and I say that with the, re, with the re realization that, you know, I, I, I came out in 2005 in a world where recruiting was different. When I was, you know, when Jonathan Taylor came out, I want to say in 16-ish, 17, the world of recruiting is, was different. And over the last four years between the transfer portal, the, the pandemic and the extra years, you get NIL, you get conference realignment, you know, talking about Oklahoma, we're now going to be in the SEC there is so much that is changing with the landscape of college football. But one thing that, you know, remains constant and has been a thing from my days to now um, to, to whenever you probably look at it is relationship and the ability as a coach to have relationship um, first name basis experience when you get on the phone with guys and being able to get honest scouting reports, being able to get, you know, um, get on the phone, actually, because someone knows who they're talking to, able to, you know, talk about a kid, talk about, you know, um, where they are, get honest evaluations, get honest feedback, be able to tell your kids exactly what coaches or what programs are thinking. That makes a difference. Um, the, the, the relationship aspect of the recruiting piece is so monumental. Um, and when you play at a place like Oklahoma and, you know, one of the guys you play with, is now the new head coach at um, the University of Michigan, uh, Coach Moore. Um, when 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 the OC at Oklahoma at the time is now the head coach at Tennessee, and you know your scout team quarterback or, or, or one of your classmates is the offensive coordinator. One of your guys is one of your guys, and Marcus Walker is like a guy down at Towson right now. When you have those relationships and those connections, um, it, it, it adds value to what you can do and, and the resource that you can be for your players in setting them up um, with realistic options, realistic feedback, real um, realistic information, you know, in terms of getting recruited. Um, and it's, 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 it's amazing uh, because I was blessed to go to Oklahoma. I played with a, a guy at, at Salem that went to Cincinnati, uh, played against, you know, D1 guys all along the way that, you know, some guys that made it to the NFL. Um, so understanding South Jersey has, you know, been super talented, um, super rich in, in, in football tradition and looking to be a resource and asset to helping, you know, the next wave of guys continue that on um, is, is is super important and, 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 it's, and a big priority for myself. So as you get ingrained into this new culture at Absagami again, you're now approximately four or five months on the job now ahead of your first season. I got to imagine you've asked around and you're getting more familiar about some of the local rivalries and your new division this year after the WJFL realignment. Uh, Lower Cape May, Oak Crest, Middle Township, St. Joe's, you guys, and Cumberland are all in the division. So a mix of the old school Cape Atlantic teams and some others that are out in West Jersey. But I'm, I'm sure you've asked around about the uh, the good old Oak Crest and, uh, rival and the, the rivalry with them and, of course, the rivalry with Cedar Creek, you know, right in your basically right in your backyard with those three high schools all together. Yes. So I, I will say, man, one of the first people to congratulate me on the job and, and, and a great relationship that I've formed uh, is with Coach Forrest over at Oakcrest, man. Uh, looking at the job he's done over there is he, he, he's, he's been, you know, on to some 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 great stuff. Uh, they got some great programming, um, have, have started to really build that program in his in his image. And, you know, salute to that guy. So um, excited um, about that, you know, and getting getting a chance you know, to, 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 to get after each other that week. But outside of that, man, it's been an, an, an awesome relationship uh, with, with, with Coach Forrest and, 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 and just saluting what he's done at Oak Crest. Um, so that rivalry will be fun. I tell our guys all the time, um, and, and, and it's the truth, you can't call something a rivalry until you win a game. You know, so with Cedar Creek, unfortunately, 
it's been more so of, uh, you know, taking out back to the shed for us. But I can tell you one thing. We are putting some work in. We are um, looking forward to the opportunity to change that and to turn that into a rivalry this year. Um, and, you know, it's exciting, though. It's exciting. We got a chance to make history on many different levels and in many different ways. Um, but before we get to, you know, that, which is a big, big thing for a lot of our guys, um, Burlington Township is where we open our season at uh, this year. So as, 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 as everything we do in our preparation is going to be to go 1-0, you know, and that's 1-0 winning each day up until then, and then going 1-0 in our first opponent, you know, which is Burlington Township, which will give us some great momentum going into that, that, that big showdown uh, with, with, with Cedar Creek week, week one. I'll tell you what, those rivals are going to be. Uh, there's a new, there's a new, there's a new buzz around them this year. It seems like here in 2024. So I have I, I, a little, little bit of a sidebar question here because I noticed your, your 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 name card right here on on this very podcast. Where's the yeah. where's the uh, nickname Bub come from? Now I'm now I'm very curious now. Yeah, so I'm I'm from a small town, small place, man. We very country. So I'm, Salem is a small city, <laughs> but then my family's from a small country called Quentin. Um, I guess um, I I have six children myself. My mom was one of eight. Dad one of five. Um, and everybody where we're from has nicknames, you know. So um, I was I'll, probably about second, third grade, man. My mom came on a field trip with me, um, and she started calling me by my nickname on the field trip, uh, you know, which Buff is short for the for the longer version. I won't go into the longer version. <laughs> That's you know, uh, we'll, we'll stick with Coach Buff for the moment. Um, but, yeah, my mom started calling me my nickname on the field trip, you know. It's stuck with the kids at the school and uh, just wherever I'm going now, it's, it's, it's going with me, man. So that's where that's come from. Yeah, I like I like that. And it sticks now to this day. So <laughs> Coach Lamont Robinson with me here on Cal 101 presented by Owners Appliance Service right here on Cape Atlantic Live. Coach, I'll leave you here with this one. Again, pleasure to talk to you as you start your journey as the Absagami football head coach. Uh, you know, you've, you've already kind of alluded to it in terms of the family and the culture, but uh, did you have to sell yourself? I mean, again, I know you have to sell yourself in a job interview, as anybody yes. does with any job. But now that you've seen the township of Galloway, you've seen the neighboring areas, of course, with Oak Crest and Cedar Creek, and how those programs are run, you've seen maybe been a little bit more ingrained in the South Jersey culture on this part of the state as well. Yes. Did you have to sell yourself to your team, or was it kind of just a? I don't want to call it a handshake agreement, but it was like when you first met that uh, met your team this year, you go in and then you have to prepare for six, seven months down the line. How did you instill your vision and what your culture wants to be to this team and get them to buy in right away and now to start on that hard work train towards training camp and then towards the regular season coming up in, in uh, August? Man, that that's an excellent question because the reality of that is that is still happening right now. Mm -hmm. um, you come in with, as a guy not from the area, come in very different voice from you know the the previous coach. Which shout out to Coach H, he's been a great asset resource in terms of someone I can talk to. I've gotten great information from him, um, but you know just very different personality wise, very different voice wise. Um, you know, uh, I could imagine there's some differences in our approach. Um, so that, that makes a difference when you're meeting, you know, young people for the first time, which even with coach H, um, you know, I'm the third coach for our seniors in three years. So they've heard three different voices, you know? Um, so that makes a difference and that, 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 that presents, you know, a, a unique set of, you know, challenges, you know, to have to overcome. So coming in, you know, selling, you know, the vision, guys see the resume, but at the, at the, ultimately at the end of the day, it's, you know, what are you doing for us right now? What can you do for this program in this moment? What, what can you do for, for, for this team? Um, so that's been a thing. And I, I, I don't shy away from the fact that I'm a hard work guy. I'm a disciplined guy. Mm -hmm. I'm a, you know, we're going to get after it guy. And that was new. We got, we had a chance to have a mini camp in those first couple of days. There was a lot of, you know, lessons uh, being learned. But I got a group of guys who want it, you know, and they the, the, the biggest thing is sometimes they just don't know how. Uh, mm -hmm. So when it's presented to them, it's, it, it, it's sometimes it's unfamiliar. But they've been they've been rising to the challenge. So that's been really, really great. And that's been probably the best part of this whole experience. But that selling has to go, you know, to administration in terms of selling what you want to do, selling your vision, selling, you know, your ideals. And there are some times where it's like they see it and it's great. And sometimes it's like, hold on, let's, you know, try to 
figure out how we can do this better in the landscape of how we do things within the district, which also goes over to your booster club and your parents. You come in with ideals, with 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 initiatives, with programs, and it's great things for the kids. But people have to see it. Um, they got to believe it. They got to, you know, see the, the the benefit of it. And sometimes it happens naturally with certain things and other things, you know, it's going to take, you know, the proof, you know, and I, and, I, and I understand that, you know, we're in the business of results when it comes to uh, athletics. And, you know, I'm not afraid or not shy from the work. I know the process. I've been fortunate enough to be a part of it. Um, and there is enough, you know, people on board. There's enough people buying in. There's been enough uh, success in, in the short term, you know, um, that shows me that I'm in the right spot, that I'm with the right people and that we're on the right track. Um, and it's and it's a it's it's an awesome, awesome, uh, awesome feeling and awesome experience so far. And not to leave out my coaching staff, man, there are some guys that have gotten on with me and, you know, selling that vision and those guys um, st- uh, implementing that as well has been a, a huge asset and resource. Coach Bub Lamont and Robinson with me on Cal One on One right here on Cape Atlantic Live. Coach, I appreciate the time. Good luck this season. Looking forward to watching you guys tear Thank it up you. in Galloway. New uh, new era of Braves football. And again, good luck That's this smart. season. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. This is Cal. Absolutely. This is Cal One on One right here on Cape Atlantic Live, presented by Owners Appliance Service. Be sure to like and subscribe to this video and to the channel. Check us out on social media as well. Tune in next time for another edition of our Summer Football Preview Series as we continue on up up ahead until the 2024 campaign.